Today we're going to take a first look at the simplex algorithm. More specifically, we're going to run through an introductory example. You should know what equation form or standard form is uh, for a linear program and what a basic feasible solution is. If not, make sure to watch that video first. And now let's get started with our example. So here we have a linear program. This is not yet in equational form. So we have our objective function, we have our constraints, we have two variables, meaning we can nicely draw this in two dimensions, and this is a corresponding drawing. So each of the constraints corresponds to a half plane, and overall a set of feasible solutions will be a convex polygon, because we're in 2D, more generally it would be a convex polyhedron. Now we first need to rewrite this in equation form. And how do we do that? So the key here is using slack variables. So for each of the inequalities, we introduce a slack variable such that instead of having small a equal one here, we have a plus x3 here, x3 being non-negative, and then we have equals one. And this we can do with using x4 and x5, and now this is in equational form. We can also write it using vectors and matrices that will then look like this. Yeah, so our matrix A here, so the, if you look at the first equation, we have minus 1, 1, 1, x4 and x5 doesn't show up, so 0, 0, and so on. We are now going to rewrite this in and this is a key concept for the simplex algorithm, a simplex tableau. For a simplex tableau, we first have to decide on a basis. And luckily, in this case, it's easy to find a basis. If you just look at this part of A, here we have the identity matrix. So if we simply pick, so this is the third, fifth, fourth, and fifth column, if we pick that, as a basis, and certainly those columns are linearly independent, and because we here also have positive values here, whenever we would set x1 and x2 all to 0, then it simply says x3 is 1, x4 is 3, x5 is 2. So this it gives me a basic feasible solution. So with a suitable basis, we can now write this in a so-called simplex tableau. And let me now simply show you what that means. Here you see our basis, or the variables corresponding to the basis. Here you see the variables not in the basis. And so we have the basic variables here. We have the non-basic variables here. And each of the basic variables we write as a linear function in the non-basic variables. Also our objective function we write as a function in the non-basic variables. So in our case, this is x1 and x2. Now, the basic feasible solution we get by setting x1 and x2 to 0. And then we can immediately read off what x3, x4, and x5 are, namely simply those values here. And we can also immediately read off what the objective value we get, namely z is, if those two are zero, z is simply zero. And this corresponds in my 2D drawing, so this is of course in 5D, but in my 2D drawing where I only see x1 and x2, it corresponds to yeah, this point zero, zero. So it is feasible, but obviously it's by far not optimal yet. So how can we increase the objective function? So the objective value z. Yeah, we will want to increase either x1 or x2, which also means we want to take either x1 or x2 out of the non-basic variables and swap them into the basis. Yes, and this will be a, is a so-called pivot step. We're going to take one of these down here. So let's say x2 
we could have taken x1 but let's take x2 we want to make x2 uh, non-zero meaning we're going to make it a basic variable and in uh, for that we will have to make one of the basic variables a non-basic variable yeah so and for that we should look at how far can we increase z by increasing x2 and for that we are going to look at the current basic variables so for x3 if i would be increasing x2 assuming x1 is zero simply then i can increase x2 to one x4 does not constrain x2 x5 allows me to make x2 at most two so taking all of those three together i see that the most constraining variable is x3 and now the idea is that we take x3 out of the basis and we put x2 into the basis for that we will want to instead of having x3 here we want to have x2 here written as a function of x1 and x3 this is very easy we just take the equation for x3 rewrite it so that we have x2 here on the side and this will be now my first equation in my new simplex tableau which we are going to see in a moment we just need to observe that of course now x2 will be no longer a non-basic variable uh, but x3 instead so we will also have to instead of having minus x2 here we take minus and then replace this by this term to obtain something in x1 and x3 my new non-basic variables likewise here this x2 i will have to replace also by this here and this for instance gives me x1 plus let me write that x1 plus 1 plus x1 minus x3 so that is the same as 1 plus 2x1 minus x3 so this is what you see here now yeah, so this is now our new simplex tableau where we did a so-called pivot step and took x3 out of the basis and put x2 into the basis and now we have again a basic feasible solution which we can very easily read off by simply setting x1 and now x3 to zero and then my basic feasible solution is simply x2 is 1, x4 is 3, x5 is 1. And I can also read off the objective value easily. This is just 1. If you look at this, so x1 is 0, x2 is 1. In my 2D figure, this corresponds to this point here. Now, of course, I want to increase my objective value further. So the question is how do we do that so which variable do we want to increase next so for that just look at this equation here so how can we increase z by increasing one of those that are currently zero to something larger it has to be one with a positive sign so it has to be x1 so now we're going to take x1 and make x1 a basic variable and again, we have to decide which of those variables do I swap out. And for that, we again look at which one constrains x1 most. So let's have a look. x2 does not constrain x1 at all because x1 shows up positively here. Here, x1 has to be smaller or equal 3. And here x1 has to be smaller or equal 1 because then I hit 0, assuming x3 is 0. So x5 constrains x1 most. So I'm going to, in my pivot step, swap in x3 for x5. Meaning I again look at this equation here, rewrite it so that I have x1 here. This will be one of my new equations in the simplex tableau. And then I also have to take a look at uh, where in my simplex tableau does x1 show up. It shows up quite often. And in each of those, I will have to replace it by whatever I have here so that I again have my basic variables written as linear equations, linear functions in x3 and x5. 
Likewise here, the X1, I will replace by this here to get my objective function also in X3 and X5. So this is re the resulting simplex tableau. You can see we have here only the non-basic variables. These are my new basic variables. I can again read off what my basic feasible solution is by setting x3 and x5 to 0. And then my basic feasible solution is here. x1 is 1, x2 is 2, x4 is 2. This actually corresponds to this vertex here in 2D because I have 1, 2. And the objective value is 3. Again, we look at this function here and we see we could for further increase it by increasing x3. We need to look at how far can I increase x3. x1 does not limit x3 because it shows up positively. x2 also doesn't limit x3, but x4 limits x3. So we can increase it at most to, to 2. So now we're going to do the pivot step, swapping in x3 into the tableau for x4. So we take this equation in x4, we write it to have x3 on the left hand side. And now we have to again take this here, replace x3 here, here and there. So maybe you pause the video, try to write down the simplex tableau. Here you see the resulting simplex tableau. So now we have these equations. This is my objective function. Again, we get a basically feasible solution by setting x4 and x5, the non-basic ones, to 0. And then I can read off 3 to 2. I can also read off that my objective value is 5. It corresponds to this solution here. Now the question is, can we do yet another uh, pivot step? So can we increase our solution even further? Now for that, it makes sense to look at our z here. What we did so far always, we took one of the variables that showed up positively and swapped it into the simplex tab. Now these both show up negatively, so with a minus sign. This means A, we cannot, don't find a variable to swap in, but B also, we now know that the objective function in general is 5 minus something non-negative. So this is as large as possible if those two are 0. But this is what we exactly have. We have a solution where those two are 0, so the Z is already maximized. Yeah, so by seeing this objective function here, we immediately see that we already have an optimal solution and the objective value is 5. And it is the solution up here, you see 3, 2. Of course, once more, in principle, we are in five dimensions because we have five variables. This I would not be able to draw, but this two-dimensional example I can nicely draw and we can see how our pivot steps bring us to the solution up there. Now, of course, if looking at this figure, you also see it would have been a better idea to go along this side. What does that mean? It means that we would have had fewer steps if we would have first pivoted over x1. Yeah, so at the beginning, if you remember, we had a choice. We could take x2 and uh, swap it in or x1. We decided to swap in x2. If we would have swapped in x1, it would have been better in terms of number of steps. And exactly this, I would suggest you try now. So this is our initial simplex tableau. Now, do the steps to get to the optimum by first swapping in x1. This will mean that you're going to draw two simplex tableaus. The first simplex tableau looks like this. 
the second syntax tableau looks like that. And this already wraps up our initial example.